Hi everyone, welcome back to Boris Delights. Welcome to our Hot Marcus Victorian playthrough. Just before we get going, I had one little clarification to make, and it comes down to when we're trying to establish a mark for a rival unit. In fact, it's better if I go back to where we were. I think it was Amazon's. I want you to take a, a little listen to what I said last time. It's quite subtle. Archer wants to go on an opponent on Champion's Dias, so could go for either my hero or my tactician. Given a choice, it says strongest next on this list. So that's the tiebreaker. Strongest. Strongest is the one with the more health. Archer's going for my hero. So black and yellow. All right, so I'd chosen an opponent on a Champion's Dias, and there were two. And then to choose between them, I went to the next in the priority, which was strongest opponent. I don't need to do that. All right, there is no tie break. Once they've found a target or a mark that's within range, opponent on champion's dais, from that point, it's a free choice. So you don't need to go down the list and do tie breaking. All right, so it's a subtle difference, but in terms of choosing, it's actually a free choice. So I could have gone for strongest opponent. I could have gone for weakest. It was up to me. All right, so look out for that as we continue to play. All right, let's get into it then. We've got a Primus to chase down. It's week 10. We've got two more weeks and two more events to go. We're in a new arena. This is Pluto's Refugees and it's a sporting event. Let's have a look and see if we want to accept or spectate. Got one local, one bag. We bring out four of ours. The health of all rival units is increased by the current act number. So it's only act number one. So this isn't too bad. Incidentally, act number is significant and it's a way of the game scaling up. So when we spectated, for example, we added a scion influence during act one. During act two, when we spectate, we add two scion influence. Okay, act three will be three and act four will be four. So this will scale up pretty quickly. All right, Act 1 really is a softly, softly approach. All right, Feet of Worthiness. Let's do it. We have no respect to offer for one so green, the challenger shouted. Soon you will taste your folly. Let's start with the local unit. No tactics this time. Pluto's refugees are the orange chips. And we have... Fury. Fury is a tactician. They've got an added range, range two, and has a special called Agile. Agile is just like an attack, but isn't an attack. So it's going to roll one red die, deal one damage. It doesn't count as an attack. So things like Quick Strike, Retaliate are not going to work against Fury. An interesting tactician. All right, bag unit now. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? It is an attacker. Okay. For us then, we have one hero and three of our units. We've got a good force. This is capture the flag. We choose the Tribune. Flag comes out on deployment hex number one. Our deployment hexes are down here. Capture the flag means we have to get up there, equip the flag, and bring it back to our deployment hex. That's it. But before we decide who's going to be Tribune, let's have a quick look at what the arena brings. These two hexes here, as well as being the key hexes during King of the Hill, which we're not playing, are beast cages. There are two beasts, a Chimera and a Sheerchir. The Shijia is like um, an ox or a goat. It's kind of a Chinese mythological beast. Not mythological anymore. This thing is now real in the Pluto's Refugees Arena. And the Chimera here is kind of like a hybrid from Greek mythology. The lion with the head of a goat protruding from its back and a snake for a tail. Nasty creatures. Wonderful creatures. We're going to randomise these. We'll do that with a blue die. So... On a hit, this goes here. On a miss, it goes here. It's a miss. Okay, so 
there we go, randomized. So we have Xiuqiu here and the Chimera here. Xiuqiu gets three health, Chimera gets four. These are arena units, they're not rival units, so this doesn't apply to the beasts, okay? They don't get plus one health. And like other arenas, they act during the arena turns. So remember, it's rival turn, our turn, arena turn. They've got combat lock. So if you are adjacent, you can't move away. And they have roaming. They're going to move randomly around the arena using a die roll and this little key down here. Local units will not be marked and they will not target beasts. And also they will ignore combat lock. They're kind of like masters of these beasts. Non-locals interact just as we do, but they would treat hexes adjacent to a beast as blocked. They don't want to move into these hexes. All right, there we go. Let's see. So who do we want to treat as Tribune? I think the tactician, I mean, we know what it does. We know he's got one attack. We know it's always going to be one damage. We can possibly deal with it a little bit better. Uh, attacker's a little bit more unpredictable and we probably want to take it out. Right, let's do that. So Fury's going to come in with two health plus one because of feat of worthiness on deployment hex number one. But with no mark, it's going to stay where it is. Local units will not mark a beast. I'm actually going to switch that. I'm going to make the attack of the Tribune. I've realized Fury is the one that's going to be coming through here. Attacker is going to get blocked in by the beasts. So if I can take out Fury, then take out one of the beasts, that'll open up a flank. Then a tactician can run in, grab the flag, run back. That's the idea. Whether that attacker's Tribune is going to cause me trouble, I don't know. Fury is going to come through and has a range to so whatever I deploy is going to come and get hit. So I want something that's going to stand up. I think I want to get my hero out first to try and take down that fury. All right, hero. And the other option is I bring out my archer first. At least do a hit on one of these beasts. Yeah, maybe that's the plan. Let's do that instead. Let's bring out an archer. It's got first strike at range two, so we can at least get a hit against, say, the Chimera or the Sheer Chur. I think this one, because that's got the strongest attack and the weakest health. First strike, black and yellow. There we go. Two hits. Bang. Okay. That's more like it. I like that a lot. Arena's turn. The beasts have two movement each, so they're going to roll two dice each. The order is important. Roaming says they'll go this direction if they can, and they'll stop if they come back lock. So let's do Sheer Cheer first. It's a three, which pushes in this way. It's combat locking my archer and stops. Chimera next. A three, can't go three. So roll again. For his second movement is a five, he's coming this way. Black and yellow against my archer. Probably going to take it down. Two hits, yeah, the archer's gone. Make quick work of that. But it does mean that Fury doesn't have a mark anymore. Attacker's coming in, there's the tribute coming in with health three. Uh, plus one because of the feat of worthiness. Deployment hex number two. This hex is blocked, this hex is blocked, this hex is blocked. Non local units will target beasts, but they do also treat hexes adjacent to beasts if they're blocked. So it just uses this movement to get as close as possible to the highest priority units, which is the weakest opponent which is Shearchir. It can't get any closer, so he's staying put. My turn, who am I going to deploy? I could have the quick striking tactician come out as my second unit. I will finish off Shearchir 
and then possibly the hero next time. I really want to draw his units away, perhaps over here somewhere. It's tough. This is a tough battle. Wow. I think perhaps the Magma Rager, his retaliate, will also do the job. We'll come out here. You can't do anything because he's dazed. But the Chimera is going to move. Let's roll the first. There's a five. It's moving this way. So he's combat locking my Magma Rager. Let's have Sheer Chur attack first. Black and yellow. One hits. Retaliate. Kills him. Chimera is a blue and yellow. These guys have just got to try and bring these things down. Oh, it's a miss. No damage, no retaliate. Okay, wherever I go now with my units, we're engaged with this Chimera. Let's bring Fury out first. Um, one, two, brings it in range of Magma Rager. Attacker's got two movements. They can go here or here. Let's go here, one, two. The mark is weakest opponent, which is Magma Rager, not the Chimera. It's out of range, so they're just trying to get as close as possible. Fury has got a one range, one red die. It's not an attack, but we're out of range anyway. Magma Rager can't move because it's locked in with the Chimera. Who do we want to bring in next? I think my Warseer. So that's one, two, three units. And my hero next. The Warseer's got to survive and make it to the flag. I'm hoping that we can take out the Chimera this time. So it is black, green, and blue on the Chimera from my Magma Rager. And it's two damage. Not enough. Not enough. I wanted three. Arena's going to go now. It's combat locked, he's not moving. Blue and yellow on weakest opponent means Magma Rage is taking the hit. And he misses! Those blue and yellow dice are not working for it. The Chimera's got a weak attack. However, Fury, looking for the weakest opponent, is already where he needs to be. Attacker's doing the same and moving in here. We've cleared a space, a channel down this way. We'll have Fury attack first. Hits the Magma Rager and kills the Magma Rager with its one red die. We have to deploy our hero now. That's our only option left. We don't have to deploy it, but we want to deploy it. He's dazed. He can't attack. The Warseer goes next. He's combat locked. He will use one red die and hit the Chimera. The Chimera goes next. He's got blue and yellow. We will attack the hero first. So the hero has saved the Warseer. He misses again. The blue and yellow are not working for that Chimera. Fury goes next. Can move in one space to get range on the hero. They're all marking the hero. The attacker can't move. His highest priority is the hero. No movement's going to take him closer. He's staying where he is. Fury hits my hero for one damage. My units are both combat locked with the Chimera. The hero's going to do a vampiric blow. Two yellow dice. We're looking for one. We miss. Warseer does one red die. Of course it hits. Chimera is dead and down. We've released our combat lock. Fury staying where he is. Attacker can now move in. Fury hits for one. Attacker hits for black, blue and yellow. Our hero is going to take a few hits now. It takes three hits. One, two, three. This is trouble. The hero's down to one health. We're going to have to use blessings. The Warseer moves three. In fact, the Warseer moves three like so. The hero moves two. Fury takes a hit. 
our hero rolls vampiric blow once more. He's desperately wanting two hits. Gets two hits. Recovers two health. Verena he cannot fight back now. The attacker moves towards our hero. It has black, blue and yellow. This could be trouble. This could be another blessing ticked off. Does two damage. The hero still stands. The Warseer runs for the flag and is now going to be the target of the attacker's attack. It has one more movement. Our hero attacks the attacker with another vampiric blow. Two dice. It misses on both. The attacker moves in. It's possible that the Warseer is going to be defeated. The attacker strikes with a black, blue and a yellow. Before it does, Quick Strike does one damage. Rolls the dice, two hits and the Warseer is defeated. He is defeated. The hero runs the flag. Hits the attacker. With his vampiric blow, hits for one. Gets one strength back. The attacker has black, blue, yellow. Is he going to defeat him? No, it's just one hit. The hero can move for two. Nox remembers the prowess she picked up. Endurance level two, movement plus one. We bring the flag back to our side of the arena. It's an amazing victory. It's a legendary victory. It's a heroic victory. <laughs> My goodness, that was... That was some close work, <laughs> but a victory is a victory. But you know what? We're going to struggle now because our hero is on just one health. It was a sporting event and it was a great sport. We mark off the penultimate week and we collect our reward. We could, if we wished, recruit one of these units an attacker or fury but if we do it will take our troop numbers above our leadership and we would have to sacrifice one of our non-elite units we'd have to sacrifice one of these or we could alternatively as a reward take tactics until we reach our maximum allowed which is three the choice is ours and this time we're going to take tactics i'm going to choose to take a bolster health a stun and a hamstring. Those are my three as my reward. Fury and the attacker going back in the bag. My units are restored back to camp. My hero has only one health. We have completed this event, so that's discarded. So I'm going to make a little trip. Instead of going directly to the capital now, I'm going to run up here to this bloodshed event. We'll take the top one, which is play camp. It's going to get discarded. Rearrange the top three. And um, we're going to put nomads at the top, I think. And then possibly this next. Okay. Because we're spectating, we add a sign influence. It's up to three. Just one step away from a bane. But we will get to heal our hero and skip the cleanup phase. So our hero restores back up to sick health. And now we can travel from here into the capital of Pluto's refugees to face Stigiana. We don't draw an event card this time. Instead, we run to the rule book and we'll look at the charts. So for Act 1, there's three local units and then the Primus with a tactic. We get the hero and three of our camp units. So our first local unit is Bastorius, an attacker with combat lock. Second, a defender, Ignean, with intercept blow. And third, another Bastorius. Stigiana is an attacker, so gets adrenaline 
as the tactic. We can't spectate this event. We can't surrender this event. This is a lethal event and all rival units must be defeated for us to succeed. One thing we do have to note, the Primus's health, although it says seven on the chip, is dictated by which act we're in. So it will scale up. So for act one, it's only six, only six. We're going to randomize the beast crates once more. So we'll do what we did previously. We'll roll a blue die, a hit and a miss. A hit it is. So the Chimera is on the left. Shearchur is on the right. These are all local units now. So they won't engage with these beasts. These beasts are for us to worry about and only us. This is going to be a tough battle. We start with the Bastorius with movement adrenaline up to three. It's got a range of one so this thing is going to come and meet us head on right in our deployment zone whenever we deploy first. Fortune favours the bold. Ursula stands tall and prepares to meet the onslaught. Arena turn now. I'm going to go red die first, blue die second. So we can roll these together. So four, two, four, two for the Chimera. Chia needs to go one, six, so one, and then six. Okay, that wasn't too bad for us. I want these guys to just stay away. <laughs> stay away, please. Okay, Ignean's coming in with five health. Wow, this is tough. We've got so many enemies to take down. I think the only way we're going to be able to do this is with blessings. Astorius gets to move now and has two movement plus one from adrenaline. So he's coming all the way in and attacking my hero. He's got combat lock, so we're not moving away. Right, black and a blue for its attack. And it's one hit, one hit down already. I'd like to try and take this thing out quickly if I can. So I'm contemplating putting my archer in play. I need a quick reminder. So we can put three of our camp units in. So possibly something like Archer, uh, Magma Rager. I'm not sure Tactician's going to help us. It might just be these three. I don't have to decide yet, but this is the benefit of leadership. You have more options. I think Archer, I think we're going to try and get the Archer in because of its first strike. And I know it's early doors, but I'm going to bolster its health as well and give it an extra 2 HP. I want it to last at least a couple of rounds here, particularly in this early game. The problem is we're going to go for Bastorius and it's got combat lock and retaliate, so we can't move away. We're going to have to try and take this thing down. So if we can do 2 damage here, would I use Vampire Strike? No. I think we're going to hit with my hero first and then if we do, by some miracle, take it out. The archer can go for the Chimera. So, Ursula, you're up. It's black, blue, yellow, yellow. Let's see what we can do. Oh my gosh, that is horrific. Just one hit. Um, one retaliate. Oh, wow. The dice can be mean sometimes. Okay, Archer, you're going for the Pistorius as well. You can't take it out, but we can certainly hurt it. One hit, one hit, one retaliate. Oof, not a great start, team. Arena's turn. Chimera first then, so red and blue. Five. And then a three. Oh, our 
your rose in trouble. Chit chat. Red, then blue. A two, and then a three. Chimera is going to attack our hero. Blue and yellow. And two misses. You know what? That Chimera <laughs> has really struggled. But then blue and yellow didn't do much for us either. Next up, the second of Astorius. Deployment hex number one is free. Four health. Priorities are hero first. Can't get adjacent to an opponent, so we'll get as close as they can. Either of these spots is good, so Ignean's going here. Vestorius will now attack the hero with black and blue. And gets two hits, wouldn't you believe it? Hero's down to two health. Our turn. Deployment hexes are all full. We can't move because of combat lock. We're going to stun the Chimera. It's the only thing to do. Archer on the Bastorius, black and yellow. Two hits. Come on, that's more like it. No retaliation. All right, hero, can Vampiric strike on the Chimera? Two yellow dice and two hits. That's more like it. Okay, Arena's turn. Chimera's stunned. Chichu is going to move red then blue. That's a five, followed by a three. Stun comes off. We've used two out of our three tactics already. We still can't deploy. Deployment hexes are full. Sigiana's coming in. Defender's moving up. Bastorius is moving up. Just wondering which way is it going to go. It's just going to move this one here. It's two hexes away. It's going to take the shortest route. If it went this way, it's still two hexes away, and that's a longer route. So yeah, it's coming straight up. The good news is everyone's out of range right now and this defender is going to cause me trouble. All we can do is try and take that Chimera down. I'm going to Vampiric Blow the Chimera. Shall I or just attack it? No, I need two yellow. I might be pushing it. I think we're just going to try and straight up hit it. Although if I can get it for one, the Archer could get the second. No, we can't take the risk this time. We're going to have to take it out. Black, blue and yellow on Chimera. We've got three hits, we only needed two. It's out. Archer now, black and yellow on Ignean. Two hits. That worked. Arena's turn. Red, then blue to move the beast. Five combat locks my archer and then attacks. Black and yellow, and gets one hit. Archer is starting to feel the pain. Rival's turn, Ignean moves in. Astorius moves in. Stigiana moves in. The only unit with range is Ignean. It's got green and blue on our hero and gets two hits. Back to us, we can deploy. Magma Rage is coming in. It will be suffering at an attack from Stigiana. We're going to be relying on our blessings for sure. Ignean's got three health. We're going all out with our hero. It's black, blue, yellow, yellow. We get one, two, three hits. The Ignean is down. Archer takes a shot at Stigiana. It's the only time they get a chance at this. 
A miss on both shots. That's horrific. Arena turn now. They're not moving. The combat locked with my archer. They're going for the hits. They get one hit. This is a circle of doom for our hero. We can't get our attacker out. Everyone's pushed in. Combat lock is killing us on our deployment hexes. Do we want Stigiana or do we want the Pistorius? Which should we move first? Combat lock, remember, only works one way. So Stigiana can move in. She is moving in. The Pistorius now has the Magma Rager in range and moves in to attack with a black and a blue. Gets one hit. The Magma Rager retaliates for one back. Stigiana now targets our hero. With two yellows and two greens. This is a big hit. And gets two hits. That will defeat the hero. We have to call in a blessing already. It's only at one and we're two blessings down. Hero goes up to six health. Chichu's going black and yellow on our archer once more. Gets the hit, the archer's down. Finally, we can deploy our attacker. That's the only virtue. This is tricky stuff, but we're gonna go black, blue, and I don't know, can we hamstring? Should we hamstring the Bastorius? I think we will. We're gonna hamstring the Bastorius. It can't attack if it moves, so if it does defeat the Magma Rager and move in here, at least it can't attack our hero. With that, we're gonna go all out on Stigiana. It's black, blue, and green with the Magma Rager on Stigiana and gets three hits. One, two, three. One retaliate takes the, takes the Magma Rager down to one, but he is blasphemous. That one damage becomes two. The Magma Rager is down and out. Our hero now, black, blue, yellow, yellow against Stigiana. We get one, two, three hits. Sigiana is down. The crowd is going wild. The arena's turn. A black and yellow on our attacker who has retaliate. It's one hit, one back. Storius moves in, but is hamstrung and can't attack. Is this the opportunity we've been waiting for? Is this the moment we can deal a final blow? Black, blue, yellow, yellow, hero on the Pistorius. The combat lock still was stuck back here. Ursula's not been able to move the whole battle. We get one, two, three, four hits. Four hits finishes him off. That is the end. That's what Ursula was waiting for. This was her moment. The troop has been victorious, but we have lost our Magma Rager and lost our Archer. That's it. We finally achieved what we needed. And it's time to collect our rewards. For a Primus event reward, we fully heal our hero. Our hero is at six health. We did have to use one more blessing. Two down in act one. Things are going to get tough from here. We will gain a Hero Pro S card of our choice. I'm going to take Transient Level 1. Whenever your encampment changes regions, you may recruit a random bag unit. This might prove useful. There's also Chaotic Neutral. At the end of each travel, you can gain a sign influence to heal for up to 3 HP. So that saves you having to spectate. And of course, we could even um, upgrade Bombard, but I've not found my Bombard that useful so far. It's tempting. I think Transient's going to be more useful. We have gone down to three, four 
units in our troop, we lost two. So there is a reward. It says if your troop is fewer than five units, we can recruit bag units until we're back up to five. So let's grab one from the bag. It is a pale toast. And that's it. That's our rewards. Have them taken down. Pluto's refugees, these local units are all going in the bag. Stigiana is now removed from the game and our defeated units go back to the bag. Magma Rager will fight another day, but possibly for the wrong side. And there ends act one. In Act 2, we will find new adventures and new opportunities. We're probably heading now to the Limosian Arena to seek a veteran tactician, rebuild our numbers, build our leadership, and continue our journey towards the Scion.